What's up? My name is Take Nova here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another optimization guide. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to get the best FPS possible and performance out of Riders Republic. So of course, before we begin in the description down below, you'll find related guides, including optimizing Windows 10 and 11, which will be very important for raising your FPS in specific games, including Riders Republic. If you haven't already optimized your Windows, make sure to do so in the description down below. This video is only going to focus on optimizing Riders Republic on your Windows computer, whether it's 10 or 11. So before we even begin, if you haven't already, make sure to update your graphics card drivers and of course your windows as well. I won't be going into detail here as that's pretty much a basic thing that everyone should know by now. If you don't, you'll find a link in the description down below. When you've updated both Windows and your graphics card driver, we'll start with a few optimizations on our windows before we move into the in-game options. So first of all, let's navigate across to where the game is installed. This is a Ubisoft game. So I'll fire up Ubisoft Connect, head across to Games, locate and click on Riders Republic. Then on the Properties tab, you'll see Local Files. Click Open Folder to navigate into where the game is located. In here, we'll see a bunch of files, including RidersRepublic.exe. This is the program's main exe and the one that we'll be applying changes to. Right click it, Properties, and in this new window here, head across to Compatibility, where we'll be checking it, Disable Full Screen Optimizations. Do note that if you get mouse input latency and things like that, you may want to uncheck this and head into Change High DPI Settings. In this window, tick the box at the very bottom and select Application. OK, Apply, and OK. Now we'll click at the very top here and we'll copy the path of the folder that we're currently in. Now we're going to let Windows know what graphics card to run it on, which is especially important if you're on a laptop. Hit Start, type in GPU and open Graphics Settings. Inside of here, we'll simply turn on Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling if you have it available. And right here under Graphics Performance Preference, make sure to select a Desktop App and then click Browse. In this new window, I'll click at the very top and paste the address that I just copied. This is where the game is installed. Then I'll locate and click on RidersRepublic.exe and add. Then the game will appear on the list here. Click Options and change it to High Performance. Then click Save. This will make sure that it runs on the best graphics card available, which is especially important for laptops and multi-GPU setups. Then I'll head back and Home and I'll open up the Gaming tab here. In the Gaming tab, under Xbox Game Bar, make sure that this is turned off unless you specifically use some of the features here. Then on the Game Mode tab, make sure that this is turned on as it'll boost your FPS a little bit. Now we're basically done playing around with settings. Let's get to cleaning up excess files on our computer, including temporary folders, etc. Hit Start and type in Disk Cleanup. Then run it as Administrator. Select the drive that you have Windows on, in my case C, and click OK. Then when it scans through all of the files on your computer, it'll tell you what it can get rid of and how much space it can save from your C drive. Simply make sure everything's checked except recycle bin and thumbnails and anything else you may want to keep on this list. I usually keep these two unchecked as you can go through the recycle bin later and empty it out manually in case you want to restore something and the thumbnails down here. It just keeps all of the icons on your desktop, image previews, etc. I prefer to have this on instead of generating them every time I open up a folder. Anyways, with as much selected as possible, I'll click OK, delete files and wait for this to run through to completion. It's simply removing excess files from our computer that it's not using at this current point in time. When it eventually finishes, I'll be opening it up once again. So start, disk cleanup, and run as administrator. Then this time, if the game's installed on a different drive, simply select that drive here and click OK. Of course, if you only have one drive or it's installed on C drive, you can ignore it. Then once again, select everything you're comfortable with, OK, delete files, and wait for it to run through to completion. Awesome. Now we've cleared off excess files from our computer and more than likely you've saved a couple of gigabytes. Before we actually get to starting up the game itself, do keep in mind of a couple extra things. Number one, background processes and things running on your computer will take resources, whether they're doing something or they're not doing something. Open up Task Manager with Control Shift and Escape and I'll be looking at the Processes tab. Sorting by memory is usually a good way to tell where most of your RAM is going, GPU usage, as well as CPU. You may have to right click and enable GPU to get the GPU column. 
What you want to do while playing games, especially when you want good FPS, is close as many background tasks as possible. Usually I'll only leave screen sharing software open and maybe Discord and Steam. The less you have running, the better performance you'll get in games. Then on the startup tab at the very top, I'll simply sort by status and all of these ones that are set to enabled are programs that automatically start with my computer and of course can slow down startup times and run in the background, leaving one more thing for you to close while you're trying to play games. If you see something you don't want starting up with Windows, simply right-click it and then click Disable. You want to disable as many of these as possible, as fewer processes is more FPS. Then, if you'd like to get really advanced, you can head across to the Services tab and Open Services at the very bottom, where in here we're basically doing the same thing. I'll sort by startup type, and everything that's listed as automatic starts with our computer. We can locate something we don't want starting with our computer, right-clicking, properties, and changing it from startup type automatic to just manual. This will stop one more process running on our computer, and of course, net us higher FPS. Awesome. The final note that I do have to tell you is do keep in mind what programs have overlays that interact with your game. Every overlay that you add onto your game is fewer FPS you'll be getting most of the time. This includes Steam, Discord, Ubisoft, etc, etc. The less you have trying to draw on top of your game, the higher your FPS can be. So, with the Windows optimization out of the way, let's get right into optimizing the actual game settings themselves. With this, I'll fire up the game Riders Republic. So opening up the options menu and heading across to graphics, I have to use a controller for this. It doesn't seem like the mouse and keyboard lets you apply settings, but anyways, to begin, let's start at the display settings on the graphics tab. Windowed mode should always be set to full screen and the correct display selected, of course, if you have more than one. Resolution should match the resolution advertised for your screen. If you bought a 2K screen, set it to 2K, 1080, 1080, etc., etc. Anything else will be blurry and or cost you FPS. The brightness and contrast are completely user preference and shouldn't have an effect on the game. Refresh rate should match the refresh rate of your monitor, as this will be plus minus the upper limit of the FPS you can get in game. On top of this, VSync should be set to off unless you're receiving screen tearing, otherwise you may see input latency. Pixel scale should be set to 100% unless you absolutely need to squeeze out extra FPS. Lowering this lowers the resolution the game renders at, and raising does the opposite. The resolution up here shouldn't be touched, this should match your display, but the pixel scale here is something you can play around with. Extended field of view obviously allows you to see more, but can come at a performance cost. Sometimes in games, higher FOV means higher FPS, which is a little counterintuitive, so do keep in mind that raising or lowering this can raise or lower FPS in any direction. You'll have to do your own testing on your own computer. FPS limit should be unlimited unless you're trying to record and other programs are suffering, such as, say, OBS. You may want to lock this down to a lower frame rate in order to keep more of your graphics card available for background programs. HDR should, of course, be off unless you have an HDR display, in which case you're free to turn this on. This shouldn't result in too much FPS loss, as it's only really changing the color rather than what it's rendering on screen. Now we get to the graphics section. This, of course, is up to your preference and your graphics card. I'll push it all the way across to custom and we'll start changing these settings here. If you don't like the way the game looks after changing a specific setting, you're more than free to change it back. On the right hand side, you'll see a preview for changing settings here. So, of course, you get a pretty good idea of what exactly is going on, as well as what's going on with the VRAM bar at the very top. The VRAM bar is how much VRAM your graphics card has. And of course, if it goes too high, you'll lose a terrible amount of FPS and too low, you're not really using all of your graphics card. So starting at the very top, shadow quality. Of course, fast paced games are something you're not going to be spending time staring at shadows in. So having this very low shouldn't have any sort of visible difference. Terrain texture quality as this game is a racing game and something you should be slightly more comfortable with getting lower FPS, i.e. playing on a console, you can sacrifice performance for looks in some cases. A lot of the time you're going to be staring at track and road. So you may want to keep this on medium or high. But for me, I'll keep this on low as there's not too much of a difference between all of these settings here. Medium does have a a rather large jump above low, but the rest of the settings have barely anything changing. So I'll leave this on medium. 
grass quality, of course, something again you're not going to be staring at all the time, so you can lower this down quite a bit to save some FPS. Reflections, of course, depend on what graphics card you have. I don't think this game is RTX enabled, but the higher that this is, the more effort your graphics card has to put in and the lower FPS you'll be getting. You should be comfortable with low unless you're someone who really likes looking at water, in which case high may be what you want. High adds reflections to the water, meanwhile low and medium only add shading to the water. I for one will be keeping this on low if I need extra FPS, otherwise putting this on high should be okay. Snow trail quality has barely any difference between all of the settings here, and odds are you're traveling fast enough that these don't really appear at all so you can push this as low as possible. Water quality, once again, is something you're not going to be caring about too much, as it's really not noticeable at all. You can comfortably keep this on low without worrying about anything. Then we get to post-processing effects at the very bottom here. Anti-aliasing obviously gets rid of jagged edges, which may or may not be something you notice. The lower this is, the higher your FPS will be. Ambient occlusion changes the quality of self-shadowing from ambient lighting on objects in the scene. So this does have quite a big difference on medium to low, but anything above that, not so much. If you like the look of having it on medium, leave it on that, otherwise crank it down to low. Anisotropic filtering should have almost no difference on your performance, so you can comfortably keep this on 16x or 4x. Motion blur is completely user preference and shouldn't have too much of an effect on FPS, but adding more to the scene does usually drop the FPS a tiny bit. I for one keep this off just so I can see a bit more of what's going on, but in a game like this it's not too important like it is in a Twitch shooter. On the other tabs you won't really see too much you need to change, this is all completely user preference. So with that being said, how much have our FPS changed? Immediately there's a huge jump from 40 to 50, all the way up to 80 FPS with barely any visible change. This is great, especially if you were playing on 30 FPS to begin with, and now you're on a solid 60 or 80. Of course it will fluctuate with where you're traveling around in the world, what scenery you're currently in, weather, etc, etc. The grass pop-in does look pretty noticeable in this current scene, so that may be something you want to crank up if it's especially noticeable for you. But other than that, there's been a great increase in FPS. So with all of that out the way, thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot. Hopefully you found this video interesting, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.